Today we honor Alfred Sippel as the 2016 Grand Marshal. Let us take a moment and listen to his historic story. December 1943, in Morristown, my mother's permission and a copy of my father's death certificate, I enlisted in the United States Navy. I was 16 years old and had dropped out of high school. Think about that for a second. If you were 16 and dropped out of high school, what would your parents do, right? I had gone to Newark to be sworn in. I was then sent to Samson Boot Camp at Seneca Lake near Geneva, New York. After five weeks, I was given 14 days leave. When I had to report back, I was then given a steel helmet, gas mask, and a first aid kit, and put on a train to New York City. I went to Pier 90, where the Queen Mary was tied up. It was Easter Sunday, before we were sent off to Rosden, Scotland. The Queen had 15,000 troops. It took us six and a half days to get to Rosden, Scotland. I was put on a landing ship tank, or an LST, an amphibious warship, warfare ship, I'm sorry. It was an anti-aircraft anti guard. On our way, we went to Belfast, Ireland to pick up half-track outfit, a large army truck that can go through mud. We then steer, ne stayed near the Isle of Portland, near Weymouth Harbor, before the invasion. We'd go on practice runs to learn how to shoot the guns, but with several air raids we had, we had gotten a chance to actually use them. For the invasion, we loaded up the first Army combat engineers carried about 15 Sherman tanks, a couple of bulldozers, a few tank retrievers, a couple of half tracks, and a few pieces of small artillery. About five nights before the invasion, I was thrown out of my bunk by the sound of the general quarters horn. The Germans had sent another air raid. Two Hinkle HE-111 bombers were dropping mines into the harbor. The next morning, we needed to deliver men to another LST. As we went up the port side of another LST, we hit one of the mines the bombers had dropped the night before. The ship had disintegrated. We were finished, well, I'm sorry, we were fished out of the harbor by boat hooks. The motor machinist and the ramp operator received a purple heart and went home. I had just had sore muscles and was deaf for three days. We then left for Normandy on June 4th. A storm had come up. About halfway across the channel, a patrol boat was sent to chase us back. We couldn't get into the harbor, so we anchored in the harbor under the protection of the British Corvette, a small destroyer escort. On June 6th, we arrived early at Omaha Beach, yet we were three miles out. We took the first <coughs> Army combat demolitions teams onto the beach about 8.30 in the morning. The big red one, first Army infantry landed about 6.30, and we were nearly annihilated. When we dropped the ramps, almost all the men were immediately shot. With over 80 pounds of gear, most of the other men couldn't touch the bottom of the water and had drowned. We were expecting British tanks as backup, but because of the storm, because of the storm, they did not arrive. They lost 32 tanks in the storm. We had only three tanks on the shore. The LCT captain disregarded his orders to stay in the waters to unload, seeing all the men who were being killed. He took them on shore, unloaded. Mortar shells were going off all around the LST as if it were popcorn. That night, we were waiting for orders from the Augusta, a heavy cruiser. Another Henkel bomber came across our bow. He was the only German plane we saw that day. He was flying low toward the battleship, Texas. We shot and the plane exploded. The wreckage almost landed on top of us. In the morning, I noticed the wheel from that plane landed next to my gun. We took the wheel, cut it into pieces, and handed it out to each man. We carried it forever. We made a, a total of 19 trips across the English Channel. One trip up the river to Ruha, France, was the worst storm they had ever recorded since they started keeping records. I thought our ship was going to break in half at the time. We had the dry dock to be repaired. Once Admiral Stark was finished with us, they sent us back to Rosalind, Scotland. They decommissioned our ship and gave it to the British. By truck, we went to Glasgow, Scotland. 
then on a plane to Liverpool, England, the same dock the Titanic sailed from. I was put on a USS Mount Vernon with a lot of wounded to come back to the US. We spent Christmas Eve that year in the middle of the Atlantic. They had the best food I had ever had in my life on that ship. Anything you wanted, turkey, candy, cigars. The PA system was even playing all the popular music from England, the Hokey Pokey and the Lambeth Walk. After my 30 days leave, I was sent to Fort Pierce, Florida. While looking at a bulletin board near the mess hall, I noticed a sign asking for volunteers for extreme extra hazardous duty. So my friend Jim and I signed up for the Amphibious Scouts and Raiders, the precursor, precursor to today's Navy SEALs. I got in, Jim did. He went to underwater demolition. He was called a frogman. The training for this was physically and mentally strenuous for me. I was sent to the Philippines for advanced training before the invasion of Japan. Before we landed in Japan, President Harry Horsemeat Truman, my favorite president, had ordered the second nuclear bomb to be dropped. The war had ended and we could go home. Our outfit was disbanded and I was placed in the 143rd Naval Construction Battalion till I was able to come home. On our trip back home, our transport was attacked. My legs were paralyzed. I was put in the Seattle Naval Hospital where spinal taps and other tests were done. I was transferred to St. Albans Naval Hospital in Long Island, which was closer to home. I spent about five months in physical therapy so I could learn to walk better. Before I was discharged, Admiral Stark gave our ship a unit ship commendation and advanced every man one rank for what we did at Omaha Beach. I was discharged in June 1946. After the war at the Mount Tabor garbage dump, I was shooting rats. <laughs> yes, I did say that. That's where I met Marilyn. We didn't see each other. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me see. Let me. Marilyn is not a rat. <laughs> That's where I met Marilyn. David, you should have said not the rat. But we would see each other now and then, and I fished, I hunted, and even started taking flying lessons. Marilyn and I were blessed to have three children, two grandchildren, and even three great grandchildren. I made a promise to myself a long time ago that I wanted to go back and pay my respects. Those guys weren't as lucky as I was, and that's what I'm going to do. On June 4th, 2014, I was welcomed back to Normandy for the anniversary invasion. I traveled to St. James Cemetery, where over 4,400 Americans are buried. I met with Mary Eisenhower, the granddaughter of General Dwight D. Eisenhower, and Helen Patton, the granddaughter of to General George Patton. I went to Omaha Beach Cemetery. I also went to St. Mayor Eglise, a small village in Northwest France. The first village the, American tooks, the Americans took from the Germans. We were all just dumb kids doing what we were told, and that's what they were looking for. They were fighting for what they thought was right, and we were fighting for what we thought was right. We were all just very young. Traveling through the streets of France, I was treated like a celebrity. People asking to take a picture with me, thanking me. I didn't understand. I guess you just wonder why you're one of the lucky ones. Alfred, we are honored to have you today as our Grand Marshal.
70th anniversary. I, years ago, I made up my mind about living this long, I was going to go there. Pay my respects to the, the guys that made it possible for me to still be here. Thank you. 